SQL injection is far from dead. Hackers are still abusing this ancient vulnerability in 2025 to steal data and break things spectacularly. In part 1 we covered the very basics, but in real world pen tests, simple SQL injections often just won't cut it. Today we're going to be ramping it up a lot, and you're going to learn some more slick tricks to squeeze data out of stubborn databases. FBI, open up! Disclaimer. The following video is for educational purposes and intended to teach you ethical hacking techniques that can be applied within the boundaries of the law. I am not responsible for any question that you get up to with the knowledge that I teach you. Now, eventually in the series, you're going to learn how to perform blind and out of band SQL injection. But before we get into what the fuck blind and out of band SQL injection is, we first need to talk about using union attacks to pull additional data from databases. Where we ended off in part 1, you learned how to use a basic or 1 equals 1 SQL injection to dump all the data in a table or bypass authentication. But what if you wanted to pull data from a completely different table? For example, if you found a SQL injection point in a query that gets data from the products table, but you wanted to steal the username and password hash of the site's admin, which sits in the users table. Remember, when you're dealing with SQL injection, you have full control over everything after the injection point. But before that point, you're stuck with what the original statement does, and you can't really change that. That's not too much of an issue though, we're ethical hackers and we don't like following rules. SQL is a pretty flexible language and we're going to use what's called a union attack to pull data from other tables anyway. The union operator in SQL is used to combine the result set of two or more select statements. If we go back to our shop item example from the first video, this was the SQL query. Let's say this query is vulnerable to SQL injection in the item parameter. If we add a union select statement, we can actually retrieve data from the counter table, but also steal our admin's credentials from the users table. There is a little catch though. We need to know how many columns are being returned in the original query, otherwise SQL will break and throw a tantrum. There are two ways we can do this. The first one is to use null fields to try and guess what the number of columns is. We can do this by adding nulls after the union select statement, where each null represents a column in the original query. If we put too few or too many null fields in the query, we'll get an error which allows us to slowly increment the number of nulls one by one until we reach the right number of columns upon which we won't get an error anymore. There is a problem with this approach though. If the original query returned a huge number of columns, say 100 or 1000, it will take us a massive amount of time to increment up to that value. Luckily, SQL has a better clause that we can use to speed this up. Have you ever felt that your SQL injections are too slow and tedious? Has this ever made you consider giving up your career in cybersecurity to go start a Mongolian goose farm? You might just have a case of not knowing about the order by clause. The order by clause is a very useful addition to your SQL injection knowledge. Normally, this is used in SQL to sort a result set according to a specific order. We can actually use this in our own union SQL injection attempts to quickly guess how many columns there are. Using order by to guess column values is easy, you just have to follow two golden rules. 1. If the number used in the order by clause is bigger than the number of columns, it will always throw an error. 2. If it's less than or equal to the number of columns, it won't throw an error. This makes it very easy to apply a technique like binary searching to find the number of columns. If the number of columns is 3, for example, we can start by guessing 10. That's too high, so it will throw an error. We can then halve that guess to 5, which is still too high and will throw an error again. Halving it again to 2 and all of a sudden there won't be an error anymore. We know then that the number of columns must be between 2 and 5, and then we can just increment the number to adjust it carefully until we find the right number of columns. The last thing that you need to know before we head into the labs is that the data type returned by our union SQL injection must match the type returned in the original query. If, for example, you are trying to pull a string into a result that originally returned an integer value, SQL is going to throw a type error. 
The second lab we'll be doing covers how to test for this though to make sure that the types align properly. Now, for the practical part of this video, we are of course going to find ourselves back in the Port Swigger Academy. We're going to be using exactly the same setup as last time. We have Burp Suite configured on the right over here, and we have the Port Swigger Academy here on the left. And I'm just going to click on Access the Lab. As with last time, the links to the labs will be in the description of this video if you want to hack along. Now, you can see I've already solved this lab. It doesn't matter though, we're going to go through it anyway and maybe learn a thing or two about union SQL injection. Now, the objective of this lab is actually just to determine the number of columns returned by the query. So if you remember earlier, I was discussing around union SQL injection and how you need to have the same number of columns as the original query for union SQL injection to work. So the objective here is actually just going to be to find out what that number of columns is. So we're going to go over here to the URL and we can see the category parameter over here. And we're just going to put in a single quote there to check if SQL injection is present. And we do get a 500 internal server error over here, which is a pretty good indication that something has gone pretty wrong on the back end and SQL injection might be present. So we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to send this request here through to our burp suite proxy just so we can actually have it in burp suite and this isn't strictly necessary to solve these labs these sort of sql injection labs can be solved fairly simply just using the url but I think it's a really good habit to get into to start sending things through to Burp Suite because Burp Suite is an excellent application security tool. And as we get into more advanced application security vulnerabilities, you're going to struggle without Burp Suite. So it's definitely good to get into the habit of using Burp Suite from the get go. So you can see here we have our request and we're just going to send that through to the server. We get a 200 OK that is expected. So we're just going to replace gifts with a single quote to do the same SQL injection check that we just did. And we get a 500 internal server error, which again is expected. Now, for the union SQL injection, we of course need to find the number of columns first. And like I mentioned earlier, there's two ways of doing this. There's the null method and there's the order by method, both of which I am going to show you. So I'm just going to right click here and oh, I've already got it enabled, but you should definitely enable it too. So your own code as you type should be enabled just so that we can actually type with your own coding into this category parameter and not break the syntax of our HTTP request. So we're actually going to start off with the null method. So we're going to say single quote space union select null. And then we're just going to put two dashes after that as our comment characters. And we're going to send that through to the server. And we actually still get a 500 internal server error. And what that means here is that our selected number of columns, which we have chosen as one here because we put one null statement in here, is not actually correct. We need to increase this to try and find the true number of columns returned by the original query. So we're going to increase this by adding another null here. And we're going to repeat the process and we still get a 500 internal server error. Now, if we increase this again and send this through, we suddenly get an OK, which is pretty indicative that we have found the correct number of columns for the union SQL injection. As I mentioned, though, the null method doesn't really scale up well. So if we have, you know, dozens or hundreds of columns returned by a particular query, then doing this manually with null is going to get very tedious. So we're going to also try the order by method. So for that, we're just going to replace the union select with an order by, and I'm just going to put in five over here to deliberately cause an error. Now we know the number of columns is three, but this is for just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to send this through and of course we get an error because five is not the true number of columns. Now we can just decrease this down to two for example and we get an okay. 
which means the number must actually be between two and five. So I'm just going to put in three here and all of a sudden we still get an okay. And what about four? 500 internal survey error. That immediately tells us that the correct number of columns is three. Now, of course, the order by method, as I mentioned, just scales much better than the null method. So in most cases, you're probably going to want to be using this to try and find the number of columns returned by the original query. Now, the next lab that we're going to be doing is a SQL injection union attack where you find a column containing text data. Now, it's important to note for union SQL injection that when you are performing it, the column that you're pulling data into needs to be the same data type as the data that you're actually extracting from whatever other table that you're pulling from. And if it isn't, you're going to get a SQL error. Okay, now that the lab has loaded, we're going to just go over to the product categories thing. It's exactly the same SQL injection endpoint as before. So we're just going to send this through over to Burp Suite. And now that we have it in Burp Suite, we are going to try conducting a union SQL injection attack. So we're gonna use the same payload as before. and we're gonna find the number of columns necessary. So we get a 500 internal server error. So we're just going to increase the nulls. And we get a 200 okay. So it is actually using the same number of columns as previously. So with this, we're also going to then try and extracting text data. So for this, we're actually going to put a string in here. And what that's going to do is it's going to show us which column actually supports text data. Because you see, if I put an A into here, we actually immediately get a 500 internal survey error. So now I'm going to shift this A over to the next column. And you can see I actually get an OK over here which means that we actually have got a column here that returns text data. So the objective of the lab here is to make the database retrieve the string. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to paste this into here. And we're going to send this through to hopefully solve the lab. So now we've seen the two most important components of finding out how to do a union SQL injection attack, which are one, finding the correct number of columns, and two, finding which columns support whatever data type you actually need to pull from. So we're now going to do this lab, which is retrieving data from other tables. And you can see that the database does contain a table called users with columns called username and password. So we're actually going to extract the username and password of the administrator from this database. So I'm just going to click access the lab now. And while that's loading, Okay, now that the lab has loaded, we're going to go ahead and again inject into the category parameter. All right, I've gone ahead and added that through to my burp repeater just like before. So we're just going to start by enumerating the number of columns. And I'm going to take a guess based on the previous labs that it's going to be three columns. Ah, it actually looks like it's not three columns. Okay, that's really interesting. So I'm going to drop back to my order by statement now. So we can find the correct number of columns. So I'm going to start off with 10, just a high number. That is definitely too high. So let's drop that down to five. That's still too high. Interesting. Four, perhaps. No, three. Wow, okay. Um, all right, there we go. It's actually two. So the correct number of columns for this union attack is going to be two. So we're then going to drop in and we're going to start with our union SQL injection. So we're going to type in union select null 
null. Now we have two columns and we need to pull the username and password of the administrator. So for that, we need to know which columns actually return string data. So I'm gonna put an A in here and that appears to be fine actually. And I'm also just going to put an A in here just for sanity's sake. And it looks like both of these columns that are being returned can actually return string data. So with that in mind, I am now going to conduct the actual union SQL injection attack. Now we know that there is another table in the database called users. And we also know that that table has a column called password and a column called username. So we're going to type in username and password. And we're actually going to select those from users. That would be the users table. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that through. And let's see what we get from this. I'm just going to render this in Burp Suite. And we actually see here that we have pulled administrator and this long horrible password and Carlos and this horrible password and a user named Wiener with this password here. So we have pulled the administrator's username and password from the database using this union SQL injection payload over here. So I'm just going to quickly go back over here and I am going to right click over here and I'm just going to say request in browser or show response in browser rather let's do that i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste this into the browser and we have our response here so we can easily just copy paste the info we need now and i'm just going to go my account because remember the objective of this lab was to log into the administrator we have successfully sql injected the the administrator's password so we're just going to grab this password here and we're going to log in as the administrator to complete the lab if you found the content in this video helpful and would like to support the channel please consider leaving a like and subscribing I will be continuing this series of application security videos, but I also have had people ask me to make more general videos on breaking into cybersecurity, as well as more certification oriented content. So that's also in the pipeline. Anyway, thanks for watching and until next time.